Obviously, I'm Lisa. This is Wayne. Say hi, Wayne. Hi. <laughs> right then, so we're going to fly through now. So we're here to look at lead generation. Now, for some of you, you're not struggling with getting the right level of jobs in right now, or maybe you've just got too many of the wrong jobs and you're finding it difficult to place. Maybe that now's the time to start thinking about the jobs that you've actually got. So as you know, this is Lisa from Wayne. We are the Barclay and the Jones from Barclay Jones, imaginatively named a number of years back. Some of you know us already. Some of you are our clients as well. So welcome. If you've never heard from us before, you lucky things. You get a good gig today. We do three things. Obviously, this is a subtle sales pitch, but we're ultimately fixated and get out of bed to help recruiters improve their pipelines and their lives. And in terms of what we do, we train, we coach and we build. So whether we are working on your automation projects and training new automation admins or coaching existing ones to really turn the dial, or maybe you haven't got the time or the capacity to build automations to make your business run faster, we do that as well. As well as if you came to us and said, Lisa, I've got a team of recruiters, can you train them? Lisa, I've got Bullhorn and I want it working harder and faster. I need more ROI. I want to spend less on LinkedIn and job adverts. We're the people to help you with that. OK, so we have a recruitment training platform and some of you that are using it right now are on the webinar today. So you're probably getting sick of me because you get to see me on the webinar as well with all sorts of different hairstyles, you lucky creatures. But we'd love you all to be trialing this. There's loads of hints and tips and tricks, whether you're into automation, bullhorn, LinkedIn, job adverts, counter offer management, data, onboarding new starters, training up your existing ones. That's what Recruitment Hit is all about, a really cool learning management platform to help you at speed sort yourselves out. It's probably a polite way of putting it. Now, as is always the case, we like to know what you people are thinking. And evidently as well, we have our first quick poll. So grab your mice because I want to read your minds, but I can't do that. So in lieu of me actually able to being able to read your minds, I want to know about your automation ROI. So press the button quickly. Grab your mice, tell us, is it helping you? But you're just not sure how. Or maybe you know what you need to do, but you don't have the time or the knowledge to do it. Is it costing you more than it's making you? That for me is a massive red flag. We hear that a lot and we are here to solve that problem. Maybe you've done some stuff with it, but you don't know what you don't know and you want some coaching or it's making you a crazy amount of money. You're literally lying on piles of dollars and pounds and euros <laughs> and you haven't even got the time to spend them. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Especially in the current market. Right. And you can choose more than one. I mean, obviously, just tell the truth. Right. I'm going to close that poll now. Thank you very much, everyone. OK, then. So as is always the case, I'm here to just position this webinar and get you ready for Wayne. That's I know nothing. I just get some stats, she said. We know that if you reach out to people proactively, you win. Recruiters, though, these days, sometimes are seen, unfortunately, to be maybe hiding behind tech, drowning in data, not sure of who to call, maybe working the wrong jobs. Um, and the, the recruitment leaders of the world are often going, make a start, or why do they need all this technology, or pick up the phone, or in my day, pick up the effing phone as it was in the early 2000s. That's what was the regular um, mantra in the office that I worked in, and masking tape around the phone as well. Um, and things like that. Maybe you're from that boiler room style environment. Certainly got some hair raising stories to tell. Equally, we know as well that a lot of sales time is really unproductive. Um, we are drowning in data. Uh, we often don't see leads. It's like wood for trees moment a lot of the time. Uh, we also know that actually, if you really want to engage with a new client, there's a lot, a lot of effort there. And equally, the probability of pitching to new clients as opposed to old is difficult. It's tough. You've got to focus your time and attention on the right things. So I want you to be thinking whilst you're working with Wayne on how much more productive you could be. How much more could you actually sell? Because we know if you use your CRM more effectively, you will make more money. You will increase productivity. Whether you like it or not, that's just how it is. Focusing works. Managing what you measure, managing what you ma manage and all that lovely stuff. 
But we also know that dirty data really does hold us back in the industry. And it also, it also holds back your automation excellence as well as the humans. It absolutely prevents you from doing the most obvious of sales tasks, for example, referrals. So that's something else for you to think about. And I want you to obviously be thinking about that whilst you do all of this. But I do have another question for you. I'm really interested to understand about the state of your data. Now, some of you are on last month's webinar where we were talking about data, but I want to understand from you, what is data doing to your business right now? Click the buttons, let me know. How is dirty data impacting on your business? Lovely. Fantastic. Right. Because let's face it, whether we know it or not, the problem is because data is invisible. Yeah. It's not like in the good old days where you had CVs piled on your desks and you could see it. It's not like the good old days where the best CVs weren't in the big pile. They were right in front of you. The best clients were right in front of you. Now, a flipping mess. Unless you're clever with bullhorn and you have hot lists and tear sheets. Unless you're clever with automation and you have your top candidate clients and candidates scored so you can see the wood for the trees. I'm really interested in um, what the results of this poll are. Let's have a look. I'm sure you see who's per, uh, whose data is perfect, please. Interesting. Should we be the judge of that, Wayne? Mm -hmm. Should we be the judge of that? Okay. So lack of trust. We do get a lot of this. Lisa, Lisa, Wayne, help me win the hearts and minds of my recruiters. We want to automate. They're stopping us from doing it. And I'll go, I don't blame them because they're used to managing their patch. They're used to doing things their way rather than the business's way. But automation as a software is something that you buy for your business. It's not something that you go, there you go, I bought you, here's a fiver, go and get yourself something nice, which is sometimes what happens in the recruitment industry. We buy tech for the team, automations for the business. It's there to open up the business, to make it run faster. But ultimately what sometimes happens is the culture doesn't quite exist for automation. Now that's no excuses. That's not about, well, we'll get the culture right first and then we'll automate. No, no, no. Automate does a lot of stuff. If you let it, yes, it will clean your data up, but it will also help you change hearts and minds if you know what you're doing with it. If you know how to weaponize it, evidently Wayne and I know a few secrets about that. So we'd love to hear from you. Right, I'm gonna close that down. Thank you very much, everyone. Right then, back to the warm up. So, please, we've got an ROI webinar coming up. Um, ROI, <laughs> uh, everybody says, what's the ROI? And sometimes people say, what's the ROI of your mother? And they go, oh God, do we really need to measure that? But we've got some ideas for how you can actually measure whether this stuff is working, yeah? And equally, some of you, some of you are telling me that you can't find your candidates. Hmm, we know loads of tips to get them out of bullhorn that you might not know or maybe there might just be one that you don't know and that revolutionizes your pipeline so tell your recruiters about the candidate shortage tips try saying that three times on the trot after a gin and tonic later on today and also get yourselves on that automation um webinar we've got a back catalog as well we'll talk about those later right as is always the case i'm gonna do that and hand you over to the trusty wayne good luck wayne thank you very much uh, so Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. If you've been on the other webinars, normally I'd rattle through five of the best automations that I think you need. Now, in this instance, we're specifically going to be looking at automation uh, around leads and the leads entity. Um, uh, with relation to that, Lisa, I'm still on the dig up stupid model. Is that right? So I'm going to be talking about leads. I'd like to know how you log leads first and foremost. So the idea of leads, it's an entity within Bullhorn. We're going to be talking more about the entity and Bullhorn configuration and how that will feed into the Bullhorn automation system. I'm going to go run through a process that I did recently with a client. So how do you use leads? A lot of clients say they don't use it. Some say they use leads, but not opportunities. Some people just don't use it at all. They're still, I'm going to say, stuck in the dark ages by using uh, the job or the vacancy or the status of lead. Again, there's an opportunity there, basically. I'd like to know what it is you're currently using leads for or was not using it at all. It's uh, uh, something I'm going to talk to you about in a second is, um, you know, what is a lead? 
how do you determine what a lead is across your business? Perhaps one of the first things you need to do potentially is to start looking at how you collate leads across the business. What do you do with them? How do you process them? How do you convert them? What's your lead conversion rates? So that's the idea of what we're going to be covering off today. So uh, this is the process that we took a client through recently. We looked at their leads process. Yeah, the, the process that they wanted to do is they wanted the recruiters and the marketing team specifically to be able to take loads and loads of um, prospects or leads, put them into the system somewhere and then track the conversion rates and track how we engage with those people, take them on different campaigns uh, and then be able to eventually see whether or not we converted them. So for that, we looked at five specific areas. First and foremost was the process around leads. The next thing we looked at was the archiving the historic data. If you've got leads switched on in your system, if you're a Bullhorn Enterprise user, then somebody somewhere will be using that entity for their own benefit. Um, it could be that lots of people are using it in lots of different ways. So you'll probably need to go through and claim some of that data. Again, automation will help you that. I'll show you how to do that. Um, the biggest area is agreeing your campaigns. Uh, lots of people have lots of ideas, but they've got no real structure. Uh, marketing teams, if you're a marketeer, um, you normally have your, your uh, calendar. We'll look at that. Uh, then we're going to build some automations. I'm going to show you some high level automations that we built. Uh, and then I'm going to show you the way in which you can track those automations. OK. So first and foremost, I think the big next slide, please, Lisa. The next big area is why use leads? Leads and Opportunities was introduced, I'm going to say five, between five and ten years ago by Bullhorn. Um, it was a way of being able to differentiate what's a, a prospect, a lead, an opportunity, something that you don't know much about and not have to put it into against a, a sales contact or a company. The reason why they did this was that they wanted a very quick way of being able to add a lead or an opportunity. Yeah, but leads are people, they are sales contacts or they are candidates. So when I was a recruiter, I was on the phone, where I was always told, what are your two networks names that you get? So if I'm speaking to a candidate, you'd be asking, who's your client or who's your, who's your boss or who's working with you, et cetera, et cetera. And it's very quick to add a lead. You need minimal information. If you set leads up, you could just add a name or a contact or some, some information. Yeah, one field could be added. Whereas if you try and do that through a sales contact, and a job with a status of lead, well, then you've got to make sure that the company's on the system, the sales contacts on the system, the jobs on the system, all those mandatory fields are filled in. That's a much slower process, which invariably means that the data that goes into leads, if you use the, uh, the vacancy way, is probably not added. It's probably written down on a piece of paper somewhere. So the quality and the quantity of those leads, if you use leads, can be much, much quicker. It also gives you ability to be able to separate out, as I've said, your prospect information to what are we actually working, where's the relationship information. Yeah, and you're going to be able to track those leads. Again, if it's written down on somebody's pad, then you're not going to be able to review that historic information. So get it into the system. It also means that three, four, five, six, seven, eight months down the line, if somebody else says, oh, yeah, John's recruiting this uh, Java developers again, you can look and say, well, John was recruiting Java developers six months ago. Again, you've got some history that you can refer back to. So I like leads. I think it's a really quick way of getting your recruiters and your business to understand what is a lead. You can track it. You can quickly add it. You can monitor it. Um, and then with automation, you should also be able to then try and convert and do lots and lots of uh, campaigns around those leads. So let's get stuck into it. Let's look at first and foremost, your leads process. A lot of you said you don't use leads. So I've started just to map out what we did for a client here. So first and foremost, do you have a leads process? If you don't, you need to sit down and get it mapped out. You know, we do this and then we do that. And then these are the things that we do to try and convert the lead. We may set ourselves reminders or tasks. Yeah, once you understand what that lead process is, then you can start thinking about some of the configuration that might be needed in Bullhorn. So here I've got a couple of examples. We've extended the status field to include things like the candidates engaged with emails or they've been to a website. I would add another one in here as well, which is what they've responded to a survey. They're all ways of identifying how you engage 
can, uh, those prospects and what they're doing with your data. And the idea being is that you can see my workflow icons across the top there. I can immediately identify, oh, look, I'm speaking to John uh, and he's, uh, he's opened up an email or he's done X or he's done Y. So I think it's really, really important that you have that status field that it adds in those additional steps. It's just a vis good visual aid. The other things that we added in was, well, how do you differentiate between these? Are they hot, cold or warm? It's another field that you can very quickly add in there and just say, well, I don't know anything about it. It's cold. However, if you know definitely that somebody's recruiting so many leads because it's come from a trusted source, there's a hot lead. And again, you can then use that as a trigger in automation to do some other stuff with. Another thing that uh, leads doesn't differentiate is whether it's a sales contact or a candidate. So we have just added a field in there. Is it sales candidate, a sales contact, or is that a candidate based type lead? Um, uh, another thing that we've added in is a trigger for campaign. If I want to trigger off a specific type of campaign for that lead, then I can use that, uh, that field to be able to do that. Um, the most important thing is you need to get your teams to understand what your leads process is. If you don't understand it, then it's mayhem. And then obviously from an automation perspective, all sorts of things could be, be triggering off incorrectly. So if, agree what your lead process is, get Bullhorn configured and then train it out. I've just put down there the, the configuration items. You can see down there, uh, down at Davy Jones in my system, I can see my lead type, it's a contact, it's a hot priority. Uh, and also he's been added to the induction IT and a profile IT for Java developers. Again, there's some very quick things you can do when you add your fields in. Make sure you stuff your header in Bullhorn for all your entities to make it easy for your recruiter to understand what it is they're looking at. Okay. Next thing you need to do, once you've identified what your leads process is, then you can start thinking about what data is already in leads. Yeah. Do you need to archive any of that data off? The two classic ones that we see that we work a lot on is uh, when was the date added? If it's more than 180 days ago, as I've got here, uh, then it's probably not a lead anymore. Somebody said to me recently, leads are 48 hours. You've got 48 hours to try and convert a lead. So if you work to those sorts of timeframes or whatever you finally agree, you, know, you can obviously put your time frame in there, give it a bit of slack as well. Uh, the other common one as well, you just about see it down there. The owner is inactive, either no longer active in Bullhorn, you've got old data in there, get it out, let's archive it off. So go and build a list, you can build an automation that will just literally go and find all your own data, and then you can sort of switch it off and turn it into unconverted or lost. So, you understand your leads process, you've cleaned it out, you've cleaned out your leads entity and you've only got relevant content in there. The next thing you need to do is agree your campaigns. This is an area that a lot of clients get stuck on. How many campaigns should we have? What they should they be around? So our recommendation is that you always want targeted or focused campaigns, unless you're doing more of a, a branding awareness thing um, and you're just introducing the business and highlighting how great you are and sorts of campaigns that you've done. But um, another thing that I've seen some clients do, not very often, but do you know what your targets are interested in? What campaign information would they like to be informed of? Would they like to know about your case studies? Would they like to know about recommendations that you've had? Would they like to receive spec candidate CVs in? Or even introduction uh, information about the, 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 uh, the department or the divisions that you've got? So again, go and ask. You know, are they interested in white papers or blogs or uh, thought leadership or in, in marketing information, et cetera, et cetera? Um, the other thing that I see a lot of is people trying to build out a 12 month campaign and trying to perfect every single month. And it takes them months in order to get all of that data in there. Did it yesterday with a client. Brilliant, fantastic little business. Um, uh, and they've been building out this, this journey. Uh, and they got to month four, I think it was. And they were like, oh, I don't know really what to say. So I said, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you've got your first two months worth of data. Let's get it switched on. So my recommendation is get your automation switched on quickly, get the first one, two, three steps in there and worry about the content later on, the additional content later on. That should form part of your campaign strategy and the content that you need to create. Uh, I've put some ideas in there with regards to the types of campaigns, I've mentioned them already. Um, and another thing that I think is important is 
um, the ROI that you're getting from the campaign. Now, bear in mind, cold data, i.e. leads, people that have probably never heard of you or may not have heard of you, your engagement and your open rates and your click rates will be lower than what, what you do with your existing clients. So just have that in the back of your mind. Um, uh, and then obviously the other ROI is what are you doing with that data? Are you tracking it? Are you monitoring it? Are you assessing whether or not it's matching what your expectations are from your ROI? Or, or do you need to refine it? I don't see enough refinement going on with automations. A lot of people set it and then forget it. And that's not the way to do it. Set it, review, refine if needed, and then keep that process going every single month or every quarter at least. Okay. So you've got some campaigns, you've been away and you've built your campaigns, you know what it is you're going to be doing. Um, you need to build your automations. Now, I've put in here, I'm not going to show you how to build an automation. Most of you, or 99% of you should know that. Those of you who don't, then come and speak to me, I'll be able to help you with that. But the idea here is I've got some very high level campaigns. So I might have a contact introductory campaign for people who are working within our IT division prospects that are working within our IT division. Or I might have one specifically for the healthcare division. Again, these are personalized. These are these are specific to the industry. So all the content that I'm sending out to them will be IT or healthcare specific. Underneath that, I've got another one, which is just general awareness campaign. Now, this is the brand. This is the business. Little hint and tip here. Doesn't need to come from your recruiter. Have it coming from the CEO or the managing director or the ops director or the, uh, the customer success team. Whoever that's going to be, you are part of a bigger organization, not just the recruiter. You want the businesses that you're trying to reach out to to feel that, that you're all in it together and you're all going to help them fix their uh, recruitment needs. Um, other ones I've got down here are candidates specific profiles. Um, here's a tip. Um, those automations that have candidate profiles or CVs or profiles specifically that get sent out have a massive peak in terms of open uh, and click rates. So if you really want to engage prospects, then you're going to need to send them some form of profiles at some point in the future. Uh, that was, is where you'll get your, uh, your interest. That's when people will pick up the phone or click on things, et cetera, et cetera. So just bear that in mind. There are ways and means that you can do that. It's very clever. OK, got your campaigns, switch them on, you're tracking them or you're starting to monitor them. So the next thing you need to think about is what do we do with this information? So the benefit of what you're doing with trackers is anybody who clicks or opens or visits a website, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to be able to track that activity and then you're going to be able to update Bullhorn to say that they've engaged and that we want to move them forward. Uh, or you're going to eventually pass those back to your recruiter to say, just let you know, Davy Jones is on the website, he's over at the emails, he's highly engaged, and now's a good time to basically try and give them a call. That's the idea of a tracker is you have a campaign running and then you have a tracker that's monitoring the activity that's based against that campaign. So some things that you can do, the, the classic things that you can do, if the candidate opens the email, then you'd want to update the status. In this instance, too, there's been an email engagement down here, as you can see. Uh, and the priority, this one here is warm. Again, that's giving me more information back to the recruiter. When it gets to hot, in this instance, any hot vacancy, I somebody's been on the website, they've visited, uh, they've engaged with the emails, and they've answered a survey specifically, that's a hot lead. We pass that straight back to the recruiter. Yeah. Uh, another thing as well, another benefit to leads versus vacancies uh, for managing leads and opportunities. Um, Bullhorn Analytics, if you've got it, you'll be able to differentiate. You should be able to see what's in your lead pipeline. You should be able to see what's in your vacancy pipeline. The two of them are very different. If you've got everything stuck within your vacancy area, then you're going to need to sort of use some filters to be able to identify what that information is. So what is it what we're actually working on and what is it a prospect? Um, those are the sorts of things that you need to think about. So, in summary, leads checklist. Leads is coming. It's already been switched on for some of you. It's not available for everyone yet. They're still rolling it out as far as I'm aware. So the first thing you need to check, have I got it? If you haven't got it, that won't stop you from doing some of these things further down as well. But have you mapped out your leads op uh, journey? Leads is available. Opportunities isn't available as an integration yet, but that is high on the priority list. It's on the roadmap that will be coming hopefully uh, later this year. 
Um, you need to think about the process that you've agreed. How do you configure that process into Bullhorn? Yeah, and then you can train it out. You can tell everyone exactly how they should be operating and using leads. Once you've done that, you then start thinking about the dirty data that's in your system. So this is where the, the integration with leads has to be available. So you can drag that information into automation. And then obviously you can run some of those data cleansing exercises. You need to agree your campaigns. Don't try and map it 12 months. If you're not used to it, just do the next one or two or three months. Just get a quarter's worth of content in place. But for example, if you've got a calendar in front of you, then you can start, start plotting what activities and what campaigns you want to run. A number of clients do the salary survey. They launch it in January. So if you're launching in January, you need to go back to December to finalise the data and get it mapped out. So that may mean that in October, November time, you need to be sort of launching your campaign to gather that information uh, from your candidates so that you can upload it uh, and convert it into a beautiful document that you can send out in January. So again, that's a, uh, just an idea of what you can do from a campaign perspective. Build your automations, as I say, build them, test them, refine them, very, very importantly. If you get stuck, please come and speak to us. Wow, well, there we go. Right, well, we're done and dusted. So obviously any questions at all, no matter how untechnical or how silly they might feel, we want to know. It might be actually that we can answer them in the next webinar or we call you with a response. That could be good. Obviously, bear in mind, please, we train, we coach, we build across the board, whether it be automation or bullhorn or your lovely recruiters. So keep us in mind for that. Bear in mind that these webinars are great. Doing something with them is the goal. So don't forget the future webinars we've got coming up to help you keep your knowledge going or just show you the art of the possible. Um, we are known for being amazing at automation and really inspiring our clients. And I don't say that lightly. I think it's really important in the current market that we are inspired and we are positive and we are proactive. So obviously check out our back catalogue as well. We've got a load of stuff in there that may help you. But again, we're here to give a leg up and to give a cuddle and to give a, a positive experience to this technology. It's there to make money and make our lives better. But with the way the world is at the moment, I don't forgive you for being distracted distracted by everything going on out there. I said to my clients the other day, imagine you are Dory in Finding Nemo. Yeah, there is some sense in her approach. Just keep swimming. Let the sharks do whatever they want. Keep swimming. Have some fun along the way. You'll get to where you need to go. Just keep swimming, she says. Mm. Oh, we could do a whole webinar on how Dory could use automation. Don't forget our lovely hit platform. It's there to help your recruiters cook with gas, as they say. So call us if you want to turbo your automation. Call us if you're not sure what's possible, but you want some help. Call us if you roughly know what you need to do, but you don't know how and you don't have the time. We'll get it sorted for you. Have a great end of the week, everybody.